Some of our viewers may have noticed that very wound up system there in the Atlantic. Let's switch over to that. And as we get the visible illumination there from the sun, very deep system out there in the middle of the Atlantic, the Azores located here. That's going to be the center of that circulation and a trailing cold front coming all the way down towards the Windward Islands. And with that, a plume of moisture coming all the way from South America, heading right up ahead of that system and probably inbound into Europe. That's a quick look at the system itself and the precipitable water and vast plume of moisture all the way to Venezuela, French Guyana, and Brazil. I'm not sure I've seen anything quite that deep. Maybe I haven't been looking. There's the integrated vapor transport. This is how we measure those atmospheric rivers. Lots of red and even getting some values there, 1200 to 1400. That would be devastating flooding if that was occurring in California. And that moisture heads into Portugal weekends, but with that a fetch of long southwesterly flow, that's going to generate some very high surf along the coast of Portugal and Spain. And you can see another round coming in around Monday or Tuesday. So it could be very stormy there in the Bay of Biscay, France, Spain, Portugal, and some of that could very well make the news. Well, back home, kind of a mixed bag, immediately we can get some sense of the flow by looking at the upper level clouds. That's going to be the cirrus that you see right here and some more of it in Montana. And this paints out a flow kind of like this. So that's indicating some troughing in the northwestern U.S. and ridging along the Gulf Coast. And there we go. We can cross-check that with the 300 millibar chart showing that troughing in the northwestern U.S., another trough in Iowa responsible for some of that snow around Chicago, and a southern stream jet from the southwestern U.S. into the east coast region. The surface chart for this afternoon shows a lot of warm air and moisture across the Gulf Coast region. 66 degree dew point at Tyler, 66 at Shreveport, and 60s all the way into Alabama. And we are just southeast of Dallas here running the air conditioner. It is muggy out there to say the least, but you go a little bit further north of this front here. That front has been in place for a couple of days and cooler temperatures north of that 51 in Oklahoma City down to the 40s and 30s in Nebraska. And with this stagnant pattern, lots of Gulf moisture and upslope flow, we're getting fog across the Interstate 20 corridor. And some fog further south, upslope flow also working on the area just west of Del Rio. Looking at the thickness pattern, you can see that support there for the front. We always find those thickness ribbons poleward of the front. So that's a good way to find where those fronts are. And a similar pattern out east, thickness ribbon, temperatures in the 40s and 50s, contrasting with those 70s down to the south. And a little occlusion through Indiana and Illinois, and that's linked up with that upper level wave in Iowa, and that's helping to generate some of that snow and rain from Madison, Chicago, Indianapolis down towards Cincinnati. Shifting to the northwestern U.S., a cold, stagnating air mass, temperatures in the teens, 20s, and 30s through that region right there, but knocking on the door of the northwestern coast region, a powerful weather system. That's a closer look at it, a 988 millibar low off of the coast of Vancouver Island. Heading up towards Alaska, it has moderated just a little bit. You probably remember a couple days ago we had that vast fetch of southerly flow. Well, that's over, and we're starting to get the cooling taking place, the interior valleys dropping into the teens and single digits, but the coastal regions remaining rather mild. In northern Canada, some very cold air, temperatures all the way down to minus 31 at Cambridge Bay, minus 36 at Copper Mine, and I think that's the coldest temperature I'm seeing on the map. So this is an axis of very cold air. The thickness values definitely reflect that. 
And why don't we take a look at a thickness chart? Yeah, this is a chart that I've never shown you before, at least not at the hemispheric scale. This is potential temperature, or theta. And this is basically the surface temperature reduced to 1,000 millibars, which is close to sea level. So it's removing the effects of elevation. And you can see that looking at the Rocky Mountains, the fields are not really affected that much, and that's because we've reduced the effects of that elevation. So we are seeing the polar air. There it is. That's the coldest polar air, the bulk of it over Victoria Island, and a chunk of it all the way down towards Ontario. Now, what we can do is we can add the 1,000 through 700 millibar thickness, and you can see that the patterns are very similar. And that's the reason that we like using those thickness contours, because it gives us the potential temperature and kind of reduces the effects of diurnal heating. And to show you what I mean, let me get rid of that thickness. And I'm going to animate this just a little bit. And you can see that when I animate this, if you take a look at one particular place, like maybe the Rockies in here, you'll notice that there's kind of a pumping or oscillating tendency, and that's diurnal heating. So that does tend to mask the effects just a little bit. So it helps to kind of average the cold air mass through a layer, like the lowest two to three kilometers. And that's what we do with thickness. So we'll switch over to that 1,000 through 700 millibar thickness. So if we animate that once more from the beginning, you can see that there's less of that oscillating going on. And we're just kind of looking at the pure depiction of the air masses. Now, I realize that these contour fields are a little bit difficult to follow. So I'm going to just go ahead and give you that potential temperature. So we'll go ahead and run this for about 240 hours. That goes out to about the 18th or 19th of December. And you can kind of look at that area of cold Arctic air and see what happens to it doesn't look like it comes very far south. There's a few pushes down into the U.S., but that's highly modified polar air. The bulk of the cold air remains up in Canada, and I don't really see very much bringing that south. So that's the very last frame. The cold air is about where it is right now. See, it's very similar. In fact, it looks a little bit weaker. So I think we're kind of kicking the can down the road as far as cold air outbreaks. I think we could see something coming down south later in the month, but I think we're kind of pushing that back even further, maybe towards Christmas or later. And just to show you what I mean, let's go to the pivotal weather depiction and bring that all the way up towards the 16th, 17th. And you can see that there is a polar outbreak, but we're just not looking at any terribly cold thickness values. There's the 540 line, 534, 528. So that's pretty common for this time of year. And only at the very end, that's usually when the GFS goes nuts with that cold bias, you can see we bring in some much lower values towards the 24th and 25th. Yeah, and that would be definitely interesting if that verified. That would be Christmas-like weather for a huge chunk of the country. But uh, still, that 540 line is struggling to go very far south. And we'll compare that with the European model, which is usually a little bit more conservative with the cold air. And looks like a pretty good blast of cold air into the Rockies around the 15th. However, the 540 line still not going very far south of Dallas. And things warm up. This high pressure area that you see here, that's going to be Pacific in nature. And let's bring that all the way back again. And we can see that there is a Pacific track that's active. Looking at the thickness lines, that kind of paints out the upper level pattern. So things are zonal. And there's the first system that we've got off the coast going through California around Sunday, then crossing the Rockies on Monday and out into the plains for Tuesday. And that'll change the pattern up a little bit and push the rest of the cold air through Texas. And thunderstorms are possible. Tuesday going into Wednesday through the southeastern quarter of the country. And snows up there in the northern plains and Minnesota for Thursday. Cold air 
following in the wake. And things look pretty blustery for the 16th or 17th, but again, not really seeing any terribly cold air. And then after that, we're looking at this Pacific high moving in and just kind of a quiet pattern around the middle of the month. And with that system that we talked about at the beginning, it is going to be very stormy from the Iberian Peninsula into the Balkans and all the way to Ukraine. And let's take a look at that progression. There's the first system coming in Saturday night into Portugal, another round for Sunday night, and quite stormy through Spain and Portugal. And you can see those systems moving out there towards Serbia and Ukraine, hitting that area at two-day intervals, dumping rain, snow, and mixed precipitation. And then we get towards the very end, around the 19th or 20th, and you can see that the European model breaking out snow from Wales, southern England, and down towards Paris. Of course, that's 240 hours out, so we'll we'll see how that goes. And here at home, let's take a look at the temperature records. This afternoon, expecting the 80s from Beaumont to Montgomery and Tallahassee. Saturday, not looking at any records. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So temperatures near seasonal normals, somewhat warm along the Gulf Coast region, but close to normals and elsewhere around the country. I don't know, what can we say? It's going to be a stagnant weather pattern over the next week. And our most immediate concern will be a rainy weekend for California with snows in the higher elevations. That's it right there. IVT values indicating a weak to moderate event, and that will affect even Southern California as we get into Sunday. And then we'll cross the Rockies and then we'll pick things back up for the Monday Forecast Lab show. And I will leave you with some footage taken in the Texas Hill Country. That's just a few days ago. Thanks very much to Greg for that footage. And we'll see the supporters back here on Monday and everybody else on Wednesday. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.